one last video this week to wrap up our discussion of Faraday's law. Now, we couldn't really leave this topic without throwing a little more calculus in there, even though, you know, the interpretation of the various um, questions involve thinking in terms of calculus, but we can actually do some real calculus as well using Faraday's law. And this happens when we have, and this is demonstrated in its full glory, I think, in this question. So I hope you would follow along and find out how to get through this in different parts. So this particular question involves a regular wire loop of a certain length. Now the good thing about this is both of these are constant. So the A is not changing. The other thing that's not changing is the orientation is not changing. What is changing is your B. Your B now no longer just uniformly increases or uniformly decreases. It has a time dependence that has cosine and sine in it. So it continuously change over time. So, but that's not so hard. We can just take the derivative of that, right? dB dt, that's no problem. And you'll see in, in a second how we do it. Then the other nice wrench they throw into this question is, there is some x and y dependence to the magnitude of the field. So we'll have to deal with that also in a little second and that will cobble together an integral for the flux. Simple one. But it's just doing this bits and bits at a time. I really think you're all capable of this, so I hope you'll follow along with me. Ultimately, this is still a question about Faraday's law, because we're talking about the EMF induced inside a loop based on a change in magnetic flux. Before we can take the time integral, we need to work out this flux term. The slight difference here this depends on time because my B depends on time. Looking at the diagram, my normal vector to the loop is k hat. So when we take the dot product, we can chop out the i direction, which is great. Simplify things oh so much, oh so much. Oh, don't forget the C in front. That's also a constant, dA. Now the other thing that happens here, we need to add up how much flux go through each individual little bit of area. Now the fun thing is, even this part, just by itself, tells us that for different y values, we have different amplitudes of magnetic fields. So when your y is small, your amplitude is small, and then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So it kind of forms this kind of profile. So if we want the magnetic flux, well, it looks like we're gonna have to do some integration. So all along here, we make slices like this. Here's a representative slice being at a certain Y value. And all along this line, I guess, this little region, call that dA, which is given by dy times x, because that little bit is dy. And then we add all these contribution up. Because we're integrating with dy, with respect to y, as time goes on, that doesn't depend on y. So we can take all that out. C sine omega t x integral of y dy. It's not a very complicated integral, but it is an integral nonetheless. And that happens because my magnetic field, its amplitude, changes for different y's. And the limit of integration goes from 0 to b. Oh, sorry. Uh, this x here is a, by the way. So this is just a. So then taking the integral, we're going to get basically b squared over 2 because this is y squared over 2, b 0. So that minus 0, and you get that. Now that we have that, we can then take the time derivative. Let's just move the C to the back. And in terms of time, the only time dependence is in here. So A, B, square C, they all jump out in front. And then the derivative with respect to time. So before we're integrating with respect to Y, and now we're deriving with respect to time. So, so this hopefully highlights that where we're integrating when we're looking for flux, 
but now we're deriving that flux with respect to time in order to get my induced EMF. The derivative of sine is just simply cosine omega t, but multiplied by omega because of chain rule. And so finally then, the EMF is just a negative of this derivative to help signify the direction. 